is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with another video. We're going to do the six man of the year. Now, this is one of the harder awards to give y'all the five candidates. I think we know who's going to be in the running for it and... Other than that, it's kind of hard to find people that can really make a significant impact and get the minutes and get the stats to the point where they can win and also put up the numbers. And there's only a certain amount of guys that I can really think hard. Can they really give you double digit points and fill some other statistical category enough to warrant winning a war or even being in a race for it? But some other players, we know what they do. They've been doing it for a while, and they also put up some other statistics that can help them get that that uh, six man of the year. So I think the people that finish in the top five was a little tricky in the order and trying to figure out what place do they play and where position is they going to be at, as even if they're going to play enough minutes off the bench. Um, I think all those questions went into it, but I'll get into it. I think Sabonis. A lot of people have Sabonis starting. And that's why I have Sabonis as an honorable mention. If Sabonis comes off the bench, I think that he would be in the top three, if not the winner. But if Sabonis actually does start, because we've done seen him play a stretch role, role before in Oklahoma City. He wasn't great at it, and he did better when they put him in the system when they've been milling. But other than that, he can play off the ball. He still can rebound. He still can score. And he still can be in the pick and roll. So... I think Sabonis is a guy that I just don't know if he's going to play off the bench enough or even if he's going to be a starter. So if he's a starter, he's not going to be eligible for this award. But if he comes off the bench, will he come off the bench enough? And if he does, he's going to put up the numbers. But there's so many unknowns with this team right now, especially with Victor Oladipo being out, losing 20 points a game. you got to make that up somewhere, and it might be starting Sabonis. Plus, if you really think about it, Indiana is kind of weak at that four position, and Sabonis is a four in today's NBA because he's not a rim protector like Miles Turner. But also, we don't know his role yet. Derek White, I wanted to put him in my top five, but I just don't see him getting the minutes with Lonnie Walker, Bryn Forbes, DeJounte Murray, DeMar DeRozan. I just don't see Derek White getting significant minutes enough for him to warrant getting this um, spot. So with all the wing and talent they have on his roster, it has to hurt somebody. Derrick Wright really blew up after injuries. He really was able to put up the numbers. He really was able to show that he got talent, and he was able to show that he is a guy that can be another steal for the Spurs. But he had to show that as the season went on and got to the later end. And if he does that again, he's going to be in the, the, the conversation but he's not going to put up enough stats to warrant the rookie. I mean, the six men of the year. And I think that's my last two honorable mentions. Now for my top five guys that can win it, starting from bottom to top. Fred Van Fleet. He was huge incremental part of the Toronto Raptors winning the championship. Even Hubie voted him for finals MVP. Big threes, great defense, decent passer, and can shoot that ball. And it's all about being able to handle the ball make the right pass, hit the floater, get to the free throw line and knock down threes and play it in the pick and roll. He got pick and roll people with Serge. He got pick and roll people with Siakam. He got pick and roll people with Marcus Gasol. He also can play off the ball with Kyle Lowry. And if he ain't going to start, he's going to come off the bench. And if he comes off the bench, he's going to be eligible for this award. He's going to score enough points to be in the argument. Will he score enough points to win it? I don't think so. But everything else, he's going to be a candidate He's going to be in the running, but he's going to come up short this year. Number four, Derrick Rose. When I watched a lot of preseason games, I seen that they was playing Derrick Rose a lot of minutes. And I see that they're going to really need him. Because one, Reggie Jackson is injury prone. He played great last year, played healthy last year. But if he's going to be a starter, Derrick Rose is either going to play with him in certain lineups, and he's going to get minutes as a two, as a one, 
or just backing up Reggie Jackson in general. Like we seen last year in Minnesota, Derrick Rose has improved his jump shot. They give him more touches to me in Detroit so far. And if he's going to be a reliable force on that bench, that just means he has a chance of winning, I mean, six men of the year. And if that's the case, he's going to be in the running. Because I think Derrick Rose can give you double-digit points, three to four assists, and give you some scoring. So with that being said, I think Derrick Rose is going to have a better chance than Derrick White. And I think he has a better chance than Fred Van Fleet because he's going to be used a little bit more. But you can make an argument for Van Fleet being number four and Derrick Rose being number five. But I just think Derrick Rose is going to get more shots and more opportunities on this Detroit team. Number three, Montrez Harrell. When I seen that they was going to start Zubak, I like Zubak. I didn't like that the Lakers traded him basically for nothing. But I respect Zubak. He's a guy that can rebound. He has a soft touch. He's a decent free throw shooter. But Montrez Arrow is a monster. Great screen setter. Great team player. Can rebound the hell out, of, hell out that ball. He is a decent shot protector, depending on what position and who, what Linus is out there. And he finished. He has pick and roll chances with Paul George, with Kawhi Leonard, still with Lou Williams. And Patrick Beverly can pass a little bit and knock down a three off off the ball so he's gonna have the space wide open he's gonna have the opportunities to come in and sneak in get some rebounds get some putbacks and he's gonna be playing off a lot of guys that can space the floor which makes his job a lot easier and them long rebounds is something that's popular when you take long shots it the rebound is long that just gives him more opportunities to get the ball and one thing i like about montrez harrell he can also come off the bench and play power forward with zubak so that gives him a chance to play some center. That gives him a chance to get minutes at the power forward position, which gives him a chance of winning this award. Number two, I got Spencer Dinwiddie. This is a guy I think going to be relied on a lot because when you look at the Brooklyn Nets, it looks like Dinwiddie was already in the running last year, but he knows his role. He knows the system. He knows the guys on this team, mostly because a lot of them is the same as last year. They upgraded Kyrie. But, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie can play off the ball, just like I said with Derrick Rose and, like, Van Fleet. He's going to get minutes at different positions. He's a guy that can really get to the paint, really can score that basketball. And six man of the year is all about numbers. Who can put up the most numbers? Who can put up the best stats? And I think that this is going to be a huge opportunity for Spencer Dinwiddie to do like he did last year. 16 points is a lot of points. And that's probably good enough for you to win this award. And I think that he's going to be in that discussion. It's going to be these three. And number one, we know is Lou Will. This is his will. His will is to come off the bench and get buckets. And he ain't going to have to do as much. I thought it was a little tighter between him, Montrez, and Lou. I mean, Spencer. I thought it was a little tighter. Because when you got Quiet Leonard, he's going to want to have the ball and go isolation. You have Paul George. He's going to want the ball. He's going to play, get a little isolations. And he's going to want to have the ball to, in the pick and roll and making some decisions. The less the ball is in Lou hands, the more his numbers come back to earth. Last year, they needed Lou to do a lot more. They gave him a lot of minutes. They gave him a lot of shots, and he delivered. He helped him get to the playoffs. He was clutch, and he made the right decisions even as a playmaker. He's an underrated playmaker, but we know that. But at the same time, with all those new pieces, there's going to be some familiarity, but there's also going to be some guys that you got to adjust to. And you got to let them do their thing. You don't want to step on their toes because they are the franchise, which is Paul George and Kawhi Leonard. Even though they do need somebody to fill those shooting guard minutes and some of them point guard minutes, they got some decent people on that bench. And they This is one of the deepest teams in the NBA. And that all means Lou Williams' numbers was outstanding last year. It was kind of crazy for him not to win six man of the year. You can even make a case that he should have been an all-star for the Clippers because they was in the playoff race. When the All-Star voting was there, and they made it to the playoffs at the end of the year. So you can make a case that he should have been an All-Star. But also, you can make a case that this run is going to be a lot more closer just because of how great the team is now. They don't need him to do as much as they needed him to do last year. This is a new season, a new roster, and he's going to have to adapt and adjust. But we got to keep it real. When it comes to getting buckets, when it comes to scoring and being clutch, Lou Williams will be in that fourth quarter. And he can play on, and he can play off the ball, and he can make decisions, which helps his chance. And he can get to the free throw line, which we know for sure. 
that adds up more stats. 17-5 assists. That may be enough. I think it's going to be close with Lou Montrez. And if you throw in um, Zaponis, Z- Sabonis, and you throw in Van Fleet, who they don't have quite Leonard, they got to replace them points somewhere, this could be a close race for six men of the year. And it, we just going to see how it works out. But I got to pick Lou Williams for the award again. I know he gets it and gets it and gets it. But I think that they're going to need, because we know that Paul George might miss some time. We know that Kawhi Leonard might miss some time. And that is going to get more opportunity for Lou to get some shots in certain months. And if he gets those opportunities, we know what he does with them. So I got him winning six man of the year. Let me know who your six man is. Did I miss somebody? Who you think going to win the award? Who your top five, in the, I mean, six man of the year people is? Whatever you think, let me know. I read every comment. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Quinn Wade, that's what else is I'm gone. And I'll be coming tomorrow with that coach of the year for Monday. Stay tuned for that. Like this video. Check out my older videos on my channel. I have many playlists. I break down rookies. I break down players. I break down summer league. I do cover the draft and I got a mock draft up already. Not only that, I do podcasts and I also talk about the game of basketball, whether it comes to summer league, free agency, trade deadline, buyouts, and also I cover top 10 discussions and stuff like that. So you like this type of video, you like the NBA, check out my older videos and my playlists. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. I'm gone.